during uh, my years of activism, uh, I noticed a constant problem uh, um, inside of uh, many groups, um, squatters, occupiers, uh, um, anti-racist, etc., etc., that uh, those groups uh, are not, uh, even they intend to unite with the other groups, they are not able to uh, do it, to manage it in the reality. We see it uh, also uh, within this discussion, we see it even like within the Occupy uh, movement itself. Um, I didn't notice uh, on the page of Occupy Amsterdam um, n note about this, uh, what for me is like sort of also saying about this sort of divisions and so. How to uh, unite the movements, how to uh, unite those groups who are aiming very often to the same goal, how to um, unite it in the reality, because I know like uh, even this 99% uh, we are, it says that we are all in it. But in reality we see it's uh, not always work. So could you uh, maybe have some ideas how to unite those movements, how to connect them in the uh, practical way? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you, uh, ah, okay, uh, you, yeah, but I don't want to be impressed, we should really keep it short. Question. Okay, it's about this uh, economic question that was arised mm -hmm. that there was no discussion about the uh, economy in the, in the birth plan. Uh, that is not true at all. Um, mm -hmm. I have not been so much in the in the camp, but uh, in the first day, in the 15 October, we organized a, a small seminar in the square, which was a miracle, by the way, that happened, but it happened. Uh, it was me, I'm from Portugal, it was a person from Greece, so it, we tried to explain that um, our problems are not related with, uh, with uh, good life or things like that. <laughs> so these things were very clear. <laughs> Those things were very clear in the square, and I made, uh, uh, for coincidence, I made the, uh, a very similar speech two days before the 15 October in the Vondel Bunker. So I think uh, people are aware of that. Uh, then we made a second uh, debate uh, a couple of weeks later in the big tent. So. There was some discussion and there, there, there was other things, not only those that I participated, there, there was more. The question is, it's not easy to, in, a, in that context to, to go from some little discussions to a political statement. That, that's something that takes time and even the, let's say, the most successful or maybe the most interesting process that has been the, the process in, in Spain. Uh, they took months until, until they had a, a, a statement with one page to discuss and rediscuss and reach an agreement. So I, I think that is more or less uh, normal. And just a little think uh, about, uh, about uh, Dutch activisms. Uh, maybe maybe <laughs> Maybe, well, the Netherlands is trying to depolitize the society in the last 40 years, but nevertheless, we had the Provos, we had in the Netherlands maybe the first feminist movement in Europe, the first uh, environmental organization, so I think it's, uh, compared with Portugal, it's a very interesting, at least, uh, <laughs> tradition of activism that we have in the Netherlands, and it's not a desert, of course. concern about the sort of participatory degree of the whole uh, occupied thing and, um, and actually about the, the radically common degree of the whole of the whole thing. I'm very enthusiastic about this uh, General Assembly thing, but sometimes I also get this sort of Habermasian itch somewhere that it feels like, you know, this general consensus building thing seems to be very open and participatory <coughs> for everyone, but then underneath there is the question of who feels invited to speak up and who doesn't, who feels invited to participate and who doesn't, and then, you know, actually there is this sort of blueprint of the rationally developed, uh, well-educated, um, activist <coughs> school person who can actually go there and be active and speak up, etc. 
So I see this risk, you know, of it's an it's a concern that came up in the discussion discussion before. And then I don't want to offend your um, project at all, but I can also feel in the way you speak about, yeah, we had our tent, but it was not you know, completely in the camp, it was a bit, you know, you want to make this distinction between you as the artist with lots of creative plans and lots of activities and the drunken hippies and the Ukrainians and whatever. And there I can see already this sort of split coming up, you know, between the, the ones who really know what to do and the other ones who don't know what to do. So I think this is this is an issue. It's a it's a participation issue. It has to do with the common and how do you put this into practice? Mm -hmm. And it has a lot to do with communication. Not to repeat this whole Habermasian discussion again, you know, in, in, in our activist practice. I'm worried about it somehow. I don't know. Maybe yeah, my heart can give some theoretical mm -hmm. input into this issue. Uh, shall we keep another question and then? Oh, okay. We have lots of Okay, okay. So you wanna? Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm concerned about it too. And but I think also within our tent there were lots of different. Uh, uh, like I, I would never say that we were separated from from the rest of the camp. But some other people say that they feel separated from. I would never felt like define it that way. I never. I, felt very much part of Occupy Amsterdam and and we had one tent in it. But uh, so I think it's uh, but but that's also the, the nice thing that everybody has a different approach to it. But but I share your concerns and, uh, completely but I don't know how to fix them how yes. <laughs> I didn't find a solution to it. <laughs> maybe for myself maybe I, but at the same time, I don't think that this, this idea was, it wasn't we're setting ourselves apart because we're the intellectuals and therefore we're different than the hippies or whatever. It was simply a way in order to do to do what we wanted to do, we facilitated that for ourselves and we were very lucky that we had the tent and the money to pay for the petroleum and a generator, the money to pay for that, that we could facilitate that for ourselves. We also made it, it in, in that sense, the tent was open to a certain extent in that any, almost anybody was welcome. There was a huge crossover, people from the tent. If there was a discussion going on that they found interesting, they were, they were there. So there was, there was it, it wasn't like a, a, a closed and separate thing. It was a very permeable um, boundary. So I think I have really mm -hmm. just two questions because we have to finish uh, so my class to go. I mean, oh, okay, so Gavin and Valerie. But I still didn't get to the answer, and I really would like to. Yeah, that's a big Sorry, but it's really hard. Like, this yeah, question. Nice. You were going to yeah. answer. <laughs> Michael's going to answer. He no, no, no. no. <laughs> 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 ah, okay, yeah, the United States. <laughs> Unifying the different movements, but globally mm. seen, you mean, or like um, within, like within one camp, you have like uh, um, both. If you have ideas for yeah. both, yeah, tell it both, you know. <laughs> well, I think I, I I agree with the the campments are very locally based, but of course they they um, use each other's visual language and also performative language in order to unite, it, like to make already that kind of gesture of unification. And this is, but this is formally, but then like the camps are very locally, locally based and rooted. And I think that's also important um, um, because, because it's really hard to, um, to relate yourself to world politics in general. <laughs> Uh, and and it's like it's too. You have to start small somewhere to kind of like expand. But I think the unification is like, and that's the the interesting thing of what happened this year is that that people are declaring themselves solid there to other camps by using the visual language and using the performative aspects of that have been used in other places as well. And therefore, they kind of like suggest like <coughs> they were creating some kind of unity even though the the, the um, even though the, 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 the specific issues that are maybe on, on, on the table are different but uh, um, and the, I think the call for democracy is a unifying call as well. Um, so I wanted to talk about this issue of the micro political sorry <laughs> or the micro political of, of a camp that actually 
is a potentiality because there are so many new new uh, people, uh, and there is not a lot of professional activists, which actually is the potential itself. But I think what for me has been important, is, is spe specifically, let's say the Barcelona example, which is the one I kind of knew most because I was there um, in the in the kind of consultas in, in the barrios, yeah? How do you bring the camp into different neighborhoods? That's one question. Second question, Oakland, LA, was um, a unionist. The unions actually participating, and not taking over, but actually participating in a way in which community organizing was happening, and janitors and other kind of like service workers were actually put in the middle as well to discuss poverty, to discuss, mm -hmm. uh, you know, neoliberal kind of like subcontracting or whatever <coughs> it is, um, and to actually link these pieces. And I think in Amsterdam right now, you know, there's the domestic workers, there is the cleaners who are actually actively today um, organizing strikes and so on. Um, and so there are, there are all these kind of movements that we need to kind of be attracted by each other in some way. Um, what I really liked about Barcelona was precisely the, 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 the potential that they had with the cuts in the public sector <laughs> to really uh, link with nurses and, and health workers because actually the fights were not just about the internal kind of micro, you know, fascist, we say, it's just internally discussion, but actually link to the cuts, linked to the artists, linked link to the healthcare, linked to the service workers in strikes, and so on and so forth. And then bring that into the space in order to make a brief, yeah? And in order to link it to some kind of aim, if you will. Because I think the problem is that if we don't have any kind of offensive fight, when we're just kind of, the long term is just the camp and the exhaustion, and you know, I just had a baby, so I know about sleepers night. <laughs> Um, and you go crazy, and you snap at each other, and all this kind of shit. Um, but really, what is it that we're asking for of ourselves, and then hopefully of states and, and private institutions that are having taken advantage of the system? And so the, the issue for me is how do we come offensive as well? How do we actually have proposals? How do we help movements win something? How do we make it somewhat concrete? How do we help a squad not be evicted? How do we, how, how do, we do that? And um, it is kind of like this idea of, of breathing in and out and, and linking through micropolitics. And so for me, it's like how, how then Amsterdam becomes, you know, or anywhere we are really, because how do we have this kind of imagination? Because otherwise, I do think it becomes so internal and so exhaustive and we don't have any kind of victories, if you will, or, or something that we can tangibly have at hand. And so the question then is, how? How do we do it? Or, or you know, if, if there, these movements will, will continue, will be a potential for the future, because I think that the fear is that it will collapse on itself. It will just be an anti-globalization movement, actually, <laughs> that kind of like did its enunciation, but it didn't really achieve actually fighting back in a substantial way. So for me, it is kind of like, how do we win this? And um, in Amsterdam or anywhere else, because that's precisely now the challenge, right? Yeah. 